Hey guys, this is Greg with Medical Muscle. And in this video, I wanna talk about living in Grenada, little tips that can really help you well, on this beautiful tropical island. And one of the tips I'm gonna tell you may save your life. There is a deadly uh, thing that happens to students, deadly, okay? So, um, first off, getting stuff to the island. You know, say Amazon, you know, products. It's not that easy, right? They don't have a Amazon warehouse. So you're gonna have to ship that stuff. And often you can get some big taxes and it can take a long time. So I really push that if you have something, if you lost, it would be a big deal. Like say some electronic charger, bring two, bring two. I'm telling you, um, have two of the special electronic things uh, if you can afford it, you know, like a charger. That's something that's not super expensive. And I brought two of them, two for my computer, two for my phone and two for my watch. And I'm glad I brought the one for the watch because if I lost that, if I lost that one charger, I'd be screwed because it's a weird charger for a weird watch. And I know that the island didn't have that, okay? So that's just my take. I had a friend who brought two laptops. One of, the, one of them broke down mid term, so he had to use the other one. Ended up working out great. I'm, I'm not saying that you should bring two laptops, but it's a smart idea, you know? You never know, you know, what'll happen. Okay, so there's that. Now, I wish I knew this before getting there, but you can buy things there, right? There's there's stores, there's there's a nice little home goods store next to IGA, the big shopping center. And they have like blenders and all the kitchenware, um, blankets, sheets, all that stuff. I kind of wish I didn't bring my sheets and bedding and stuff because I could just bought it there and save some space in my suitcase, but whatever. Now, this is just a little weird little hint and I think it's really helpful. I brought a little umbrella, it was small, it's only like that tall. Always, everywhere with me in my backpack. It doesn't rain every day there. It's, it kind of rains, you know, maybe a few times a week, but every so often, I'm gonna tell you, there can be a freaking huge, huge rainstorm out of nowhere. And you can be caught in it. You know, you're walking to school or something. So having an umbrella that you can just bust out at any moment is really helpful, okay? That's my little hand. All right, so um, I, I was, I think I've talked about this in another video. Have cash on you pretty much all the time. Um, I would say most vendors on, on campus will take cards, you know, obviously. Um, but it's just a smart thing because sometimes they don't, they only take cash or especially like produce people that sell like um, fruit and vegetables. There's like a little store on campus that does that. And uh, you know, there's a guy with a truck that comes close to campus. He's got all the fruit. He only takes cash. So if you want some cheap produce, that's the way to go. Um, and it's good. So keep some cash on you. Also, just like a little weird side note, there are these little buses uh, they call them city buses. They're not, they're like little vans. They're just vans um, that drive around. They loop around and they just pick up people and flag them down. They will take you to St. George. You know, you have to ask them where they're going to they're gonna go, but sometimes they're going to St. George, which is like, I think like six or seven miles away, something like that, like a good distance away. Uh, none of the school buses go that way. And, uh, you can get there for $2.50 EC, which comes out to like a quarter US, something like that. So if you want really cheap transportation, that's the way to go. Um, but you have to have cash, okay? So always carry cash. Now, let's talk about transportation and going on that. Here comes how medical students die, how students in general die, die on the island, okay, is um, how dangerous it is to drive there or to be on the road, I'm telling you. Um, the roads are very steep. They're not well built, there's a lot of potholes, but they're, they're, they're steep, they're windy, and they're narrow, okay? And so you got guys driving these little city buses, these vans, um, around corners going downhill very fast, and there's other vans going really fast the opposite direction, and they like, they'll play chicken. They'll wait until the last second before someone decides to pull off. Um, so you don't wanna be on the side of the road. You don't 
you really gotta like be okay listen to me please do not get a scooter they seem cool but you got these other guys driving around full speed and students get clipped all the time on the scooter people don't see you and they die they freaking get killed um i think it's the number one cause of death for students is people on scooters and you know what i know a handful of students that really ate shit on those things and it wasn't even anybody else's fault it was totally their fault it was just it had rained it was slick their wheels slid underneath them they got total road rash all over you know um you know so you don't want to be hit by another car you don't want anything crazy i'm just telling you that's just a huge thing to uh, protect your life seriously and that also goes for walking on the sidewalk um I don't know what it is. Um, I, maybe I'm just super like hyper paranoid about this, but I always noticed like US students would just be walking in the street. And I'm like, what are you doing? And these cars would be going so fast, coming so close. I'm like, and, and the, the students were just like oblivious. I was like, dude, that's how you're gonna get clipped by a car, you know? So just be careful, seriously. That's, that's my one danger. The rest of it's pretty safe. Myland's re really safe. I loved it there. Um, so the buses, right? The school buses, um, they they go around pretty much where all the students live. There's bus routes. Um, I really, I thought they were really useful, right? For my, for my house, it was about 15 minutes. Unfortunately, they were going the opposite direction from the school. When I get on it, it's going the opposite way to go loop around and then come back. So what I would do was I would download the lecture slides on my computer and like that would be part of my pre-read. I sometimes I could pre-read a whole DLA on the bus. Um, you have to have a good strong stomach to handle all the turns of what those bus buses do. Uh, but you know that's what I did, and it was fine. It's air conditioned. Um, you don't need a car. Basically, what I'm saying is you don't need a car. You can get away with that. All right. So uh, this is just kind of weird. The dorms and the study halls at St. George are freezing freaking cold. Freezing cold, I mean like in the 60s. Like way colder than it needs to be. And I think the main reason is they have to reduce like um, fungus growing, um, things like that, mildew. So they have to keep it really cold. Um, that means you have to bring a sweater and um, sweatpants. So if, you're, if you haven't gone to the island yet, It'd be a really smart idea to have like some thin sweatpants or like sweater that you could throw in your backpack so it's not making your backpack super bulky bringing it to the to the campus um, if you live off campus and if you live on campus then i think you're okay uh, but yeah definitely um it gets cold it's, it's crazy crazy people had multiple outfits they had their <laughs> walking to school hot outfit you know shorts and tank top and then you know, they're snow gear when they get into the study hall. So just a little side note. Um, don't make whiteboard forts. <laughs> I don't know why that's a thing. Um, you go to these study halls and people take all the whiteboards and they like to make a little fort. Don't do that. Don't be those people. Okay. That's just my little, <laughs> my little, my little thing. You want to use a whiteboard people make these little forts that they can, you know, defend. It's weird. I don't get it. You'll get it when you, you'll understand what, I, when you, what I'm talking about when you see it. Um, sun exposure. Okay. So you live on the equator pretty much, you know, close to it. So, you know, the pros of it, I guess, is that you get um, perfect, 12, basically perfect 12 hour days. Sun rises at five, sun sets at five. Something like that. It's like 530, 530 rise, 530 sunset every day all year pretty much you know it varies by like 15 minutes it's not crazy um so your sleep schedule actually gets really good you know there's no change in the time of day so you can go to sleep basically at the same time and the sun rises at the same time every day so that's really nice but um the downside is the sun is super intense uh, i heard a really sad story that one of the students from sgu got melanoma and ended up dying um, at a young age she loved to go to the beach and suntan. Um, I never did that ever because because I'm so pale, if you can tell. Um, <laughs> so I brought sunscreen to the island. I brought a big tub of sunscreen from the U.S. and uh, I used it every day. 
uh, that I walked to school, face, arms, everything, and I never got burned. So it really worked. Um, but you know, just something to think about. Okay, um, get scuba certified. If you're into that thing, if you, if you can swim and you have been thinking about scuba diving, this is the time to do it. I'm telling you, I wish I took advantage of scuba diving earlier. It's beautiful and it's cheap and they have great, um, great instructors. Uh, they're the, the ones that we were working with. She was from uh, Chicago, I think. Uh, she was just down there teaching and uh, it was great. It was um, amazing. There's very few sharks in Grenada. I think it's one of the lowest shark attack islands in the Caribbean. Like if you go from Florida all the way down that whole chain of islands to Grenada, Grenada is one of the lowest. They haven't had a shark attack in the last, like, I think it was like 50 years. And it's just, they just don't see them. So that makes the water, you know, if you're, if you're scared of that, then that's something you don't have to worry about. I mean, they're, they're there, they're there. Uh, if you're, you're lucky, you might see one, but um, for the most part, you're just going to see a lot of, you know, puffer fish, lionfish, those guys, those guys suck. But um, just some really beautiful coral, crystal clear waters, um, just magical. I, I wish I took advantage of that earlier. I, once I got my license, I was going night diving, all that. It's such a good thing. Like if there's a long weekend, get certified. It is, I'm telling you, 100% worth it. Okay. All right. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, my, one of my last two points, go to Carico. I went there as like a, a, a final hurrah after term five. I wish I went there earlier. It is so beautiful. And actually what was really fun is we got a tour from there to go hit the little tiny miniature islands um, and camp out there. It was so much fun. The guy had his own little boat, he had a little boat and we, had all, we were all sitting on it. And uh, he, we would just stop at different islands, would have lunch. Um, he brought these coolers. Uh, he caught some fish and uh, we had like a picnic uh, dinner, um, just this picnic style. Like I had all these tables set up and uh, the fish that he had caught that earlier that day and he had, we had we set up tents and we just camped out there. It was, we were on an island that was probably, you know, no longer than a football field and maybe like 40 feet wide, like super short, like just a long skinny island camping out on this thing, you know, waking up to the sound of the ocean. It was so freaking beautiful. So I, I think you guys should take a trip to Carico and go hit those little islands, do a tour, um, get, you know, get some with a boat. It was worth it. Totally worth it. Guys, the tour guys were amazing. They were so nice, friendly people, you know? Um, yeah, great experience. And then, uh, the last point that I want to make is, um, you know, explore the island, seriously. Um, take the chance to go, you know, if you have a chance, if someone's got a car, go drive around the island. There's all these waterfalls. Um, just seriously, be friendly. I don't know what it is. I think, um, I'm gonna be honest, people in Grenada are extremely friendly. Um, they'll actually get offended if you don't say good morning or like afternoon, you know, say hello or anything like that. They'll, 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 be, they'll take offense to that because you know, it's a small place and everybody kind of knows each other. So it's kind of expected that you're going to be friendly with each other. So, you know, say hi to people when they're walking by. Um, people kind of expect that. And they think of medical students as rude. I think uh, students just kind of feel shy or um, they just want to avoid uh, locals for some reason. I don't know. Um, no, don't do that. Be very friendly. Everybody's very friendly. Um, so, you know, Treat everybody um, nice and uh, you'll have a great time. Seriously, uh, there's a lot of great experiences there. And um, obviously, you know, stay safe. Um, but yeah, I think you guys are gonna really like it. All right, that was my rant on that topic. Hope you guys uh, kick butt.